Land bases are the foundation of a great deck, and we don't spend nearly enough effort designing them when that's the real differentiator between a good deck and a great deck. Except, I hate doing land bases. And that's why I'm making two comprehensive deep dives on land bases on how many lands you should play and how to balance multicolor land bases. Today we're covering on an age-old question, how many lands should be in a commander deck? Today's video is going to be really research heavy. I'm going to give you the answer right away. And it's 43. I know, that's absurd. So later, I'm going to show you how we cheat this number. But first, we need to understand why it has to be 43. Or you can just skip the video and flame me in the comments or Reddit. That works too. Just subscribe to the Patreon. Every archetype of magic has different land counts to support different curves. Aggro decks have less lands. Control has more. Midrange, something in between. In Commander, we almost have it easier because the play pattern of Commander generally fits closer to control or mid-range. Our curves focus on bigger spells we put into play or resolve and create synergistic engines that generally cost three mana or greater. So just keep that in the back of your mind while we go through this video. But let's actually jump to 40 card limited real quick. Whenever you play a 40 card format, you're recommended to play 17 lands in a 40-card deck. And back in 2017, Magic Pro, Frank Karsten, and now Lorcana Pro too, calculated with hypergeometric probability how many lands to play to consistently hit your land drops. But don't worry, I'm really bad at math, so this video is going to be really simple. Frank Karsten proved that 17 lands is a good number for balancing the probability of having enough lands to hit your first few land drops and play your spells and reduce mana flooding. And here is my dumb simple way of thinking about land counts forever. If I divide 17 by 40, we get 0.425. This is my land ratio. Now we multiply 0.425 to the total number of cards in a library, say 60, we get 25.5. And quick check on the land results for 60 card. Still looking good. And this finally leads us to the golden number of the video. Let's multiply 0.425 by 100. Well, that's easy. We just move the decimal two points over and round up. Haha, <laughs> not that bad at math. This puts us at 43 lands. The absurd golden number. Doing the same exercise we did to arrive to 43, I've replicated the process for every other land count in this chart to create the land scale for Commander. I'm going to take a pause here and remind us what scale we are trying to play in Commander. On this chart, Franks also defined for us what range of lands fits within each archetype of Magic decks. This parks 43 lands exactly where we want it to be within the realm of midrange or the border of control while lesser land counts put us closer to aggro decks, which makes sense because we see this more in CDH and that's closer to an aggressive playstyle or combo playstyle. And to reference an older Magic Data Science article, the average land count of EDH rec deckless have 36 lands. If we do a quick check back, that puts us within the range of aggro decks. No bueno. And to further validate 43 lands, we're going to reference a god of deck building, Sam Black who arrived to this number a little differently. You play 41, closer to the floor, I'd recommend. Um, so you're still like 18% to miss uh, better. 43 is closer to what I target often. That brings you down to below 15% to miss. Uh, that feels a lot better to me. Frank Karsten updated his formula, by the way, in 2024 to account for MDFC lands and the Companion Rule, which makes it closer to Commander, by the way, and also adjusted his formula to include the fact that Commander has a free mulligan and also drawing on the play. And we still see that 43 is still the correct number of lands you should be playing in Commander. But nobody wants to do that. I don't want to do that. Even Wizards of the Coast doesn't build pre-cons of 43 lands. They build with 37 to 39, which puts us between aggro and mid-range on the scale, by the way. So. What do we do with this ugly truth? Now, I bet a lot of you are thinking about the cheat to reduce this number. That for every few pieces, like three, of mana acceleration or ramp, you can cut a land. 
Or, with enough cantripping or card draw, you're able to slim down on lands because you can dig for them better with your cantrips. But here's the reason why you don't want to do that. There uh, are other calculations that factor in your other mana sources, and I think that that's uh, kind of putting the cart before the horse. Making sure that you can hit your land drops always needs to precede deciding how many mana rocks you're going to pull up. Because rocks can generally be removed by your opponents, but the greater problem is that mana rocks or ramp are paid land drops in the event you ramped for the turn, but didn't hit the land drop after. If you had two lands and a talisman and didn't draw the third land, it would have been the same effect of creating a board to generate three mana, except you took your second turn to play it, and artifacts are easier to be removed. Now this doesn't mean you don't play mana rocks, mana rocks are great. It means that we should be viewing mana rocks differently. Mana rocks should be considered for high mana cost commanders or high color costs. Mana rocks itself will be a different video completely, but here's an earlier video that talks all about mana rocks and their actual role in commander. All right, what's the effective difference between a mana rock versus a ritual? And when should you play one over the other in commander when you're deck building? If we don't want to play 43, which is the doctor's recommendation, and who really listens to that, really? And if three out of four magic legends tell you to play more lands, but it's 43, I'm pretty sure we're all trusting that fourth legend who says elsewise. So I'm going to be the bad influence and recommend here's how we design our land bases knowing 43 is the good number. But before we do that, if you like this video so far, please subscribe to my Patreon to support more videos like this and also chat on the Discord, it's cool, thank you. First, we're going to create a scale of 36 to 43. The lower amount of lands we have, the greater amount of risk we're going to incur for our mulligans. 36 is our border that we should never cross. Using the same hypergeometric calculator that Sam used in his video, I'm going to replicate the process and set that by turn 4. We want to have seen 4 lands, which equates to a sample size of 12, because 12 is the number of cards we've seen after 4 turns. And I'm setting 4 because the average mana value of all commanders is something like 3.5, which makes this model pretty applicable to most decks you'll be building. And also most of our curving commanders starts at 3 to 4. So at 36 lands, our failure rate is more than a quarter of our mulligans. And here's the rest of the scale for your reference. So looking at this scale of probability of failing to see four lands within our first four draws compared to probability of success, I picked 40 because first of all, 40 is an easy number to remember. And also it puts us at 80% success in seeing four lands, which I like. So here's the three ways we're going to optimize this land base to hedge against our 6% difference in missing four lands compared to having 43 lands. And also, we're going to try to hedge against the greater chance of flooding compared to the 36 land count. Because we're short 3 lands compared to 43, we can easily replace these with all-star staples of land cyclers from Lord of the Rings, then Ixalan, Shards of Alara, or even Scourge. If you want to play less lands than 40, just replace more of these slots with more cyclers or ram spells if you're in green, or mana rocks. Then for our land base itself, we can max out on MDFC spells from Modern Horizons 3, which all generally range from useful to actually pretty good. So this cuts about two lands per color with an extra per color pair. We can also play Zendikar Rising MDFC spells as well. This ends up cutting about six spells per color. By playing these cards, it gives us lots of ways to keep the 40 lands without worrying about having no action. And for situations of Flood, we can play an assortment of cycling lands that was reprinted in Modern Horizons, Cycling Deserts and Duels from Amonkhet, or the Cycling Trilands from Capenna or Ikoria. For MDFCs and cycling lands, most of these come at the cost of having the lands come to play tapped. I would advise no more than 10 lands and your entire land base should come to play tapped, as this gives us a quarter of our hits in our 40 card land base to come to play tapped, which is not as awful as it sounds given Commander is less reliant on making sure you curve out rather than having the lands to play the right spells later in the game. 
the last trick up our sleeve is also just playing lands that actually do things, which is extremely common in contemporary standard and pioneer midrange decks, as board stalls can happen between midrange mirrors, and being able to convert turn after turn of lands into resources can decide the match. I like playing the clue lands that can investigate to give you pseudo card draw to sink mana into, but also we can play an assortment of Eldraine lands that can be great as well. Fountain Port from Bloomborough is also an incredible utility land to play, and we can also play the Ravnica lands that have abilities as well, or the man lands in different color pairs. Ultimately, the number of lands you want to play is up to you. The recommendation is playing 40 lands, and as we explore today, designing the quantity of lands is a careful balance. How much you're willing to risk having mana screw in relation to the amount of mulligans you'll need to see the amount of lands you need, and also designing it against Mana Flood by giving your lands a variety of action or value it can deliver. In the future, we'll cover fetch lands and actual color fixing, as that's an equally deep topic. But for a very quick and easy explanation, you can also check out this Magic Foundations video. If you want to level up your deck building another way, you should definitely check out this super easy template called Cube Theory to build your next commander deck. Thanks for watching. Happy New Year. Bye.